Well, we're going to start trigonometry. I uh, wasn't planning to do it quite this early. I was going to finish doing all the chemistry course. But um, I have a diligent student in Florida, Tatiana, who reached out to me and said, please, Mr. Ranger. And she's been diligent about sending me questions about specific pages. So we're going to do our best to try to create some videos and uh, try to keep up with her progress. Um, <clears throat> in looking through this first pace, and, and thankfully about trigonometry, there are only six paces in the course. So it's not a long course, it's a half, half year course. But it, it, I mean, trigonometry, there's no doubt about it. It's challenging. It goes, um, it builds on, but it goes way beyond what you covered in Algebra 2. The good news is this course has been rewritten in the new fourth edition style. And you can tell that by this um, tab up here. Is the layout of is, is different. It's in color. I think the explanations are much better. And overall, I think it's, you'll find it's a much better course than Algebra 2 was. But we made it through Algebra 2. Yippee! They do expect us to use a calculator for this. They talk about the um, Texas Instruments, um, I forget which number it is, 85 or something, 84. Really, any ga graphing calculator should be able to do the types of things you're going to do in this course. Okay? Um, before we actually dive into a particular page, I just want to mention, yes, have a calculator, number two. You're going to be able to do this, okay? You are going to succeed, <clears throat> and uh, we'll try to make videos to help. But I also want you to treat the score key as a friend and not as a judge. And I, what I mean by that is, um, with the permission of your supervisor, your parent, there may be times, because there's not a lot of examples that they give, so you may need to check with your score key frequently as you're going through problems. Let's say you're doing a page where there's 10 problems. I would you know, try to do the first one or two, and then grab the score key and compare your work right away. Don't do the whole page. And just see, are you on the right track? If you're not, don't just say, oh, rats, I got it wrong, and push the score key away. Treat it as a friend. Treat it as a helper, as a tutor. And study those examples and try to understand, okay, why, why did, how did we get it from this step to this step? Let me try that in my calculator, see if I get the same thing that they got, okay? And work your way through a couple of problems, okay? Where I'm not saying to copy answers from the score key in your pace. You're not learning it then. And then put the score key away, go back, rework those problems, work the next several problems, check your work again. Research tells us that the quicker you check your work after you do a, a math problem, the better you will get at learning how to do it. Um, if you just do the whole page, push the score key away, don't score it, say I'll score it tomorrow, and then maybe it's another day or two or three to get around to scoring it. Your brain has solidified the idea of how to solve it and it's learned it wrong. So it's better to get the immediate feedback and then correct your thinking and then do several correctly. And uh, that will help your brain correctly learn the material. All right. And then the last thing I just want to mention is <clears throat> in trigonometry, there, there's a lot more to memorize and use than there is to actually understand. Most of the things that you have to understand are really algebra concepts that you already covered in Algebra 1, maybe geometry a little bit, Algebra 2. And you're going to be applying it now in some new and unique ways. So if you're not, if you're saying, I don't get why they're doing this. Think of it more as applying the algebra and the geometry. Remember in geometry how you did a lot of proofs? You know, this step leads to this step, this step leads to this step, this step leads to, and then you had a reason for what you're doing each time. They're gonna do some things like that and then all of a sudden come up with a statement. And you don't have to memorize all of those steps and reprove it all the time. Once they've proven it, you can write that down on a, I don't want to call it a cheat sheet, <clears throat> a reference page, okay? And then keep using that as you're doing your assignments. Over time, we want you to memorize some of these things, 
But um, just like Pythagorean's theorem, you know, is the hypotenuse squared equals the square of the other two sides. So c squared equals a squared plus b squared. Remember that? That's a very um, familiar, we use it in geometry and algebra. We're going to use that a lot in trigonometry. But we just need to have that memorized and be able to use it quickly and easily. But until you get comfortable with it, have a reference sheet, have a notebook where you write all of these identities, they call them, down, definitions, and then as you're doing your homework, you can look back. It's okay to look at your reference sheets while you're doing your work and uh, try to um, Try to memorize as much as you can. So there's a lot more emphasis on memory and application than on truly understanding. Okay? So I don't know if that don't don't get stuck on I don't get why. If you can get the right answer, if you can apply it, you can follow the steps and you can get the right answer. Okay, you're doing great. And uh, the greater understanding will come the further you move. You look back and say, oh now I get it. But you may, that light bulb may not come on as you're working through it. You may, I always tell my students as they're working through algebra courses, you always feel like you're drowning, okay? And that's a common feeling while you're moving into Because as soon as you feel like you're getting a footing, then all of a sudden you turn the page and you're moving out into deeper water. And again, you feel like you're drowning. And, it, and then an undertow comes and knocks your feet out from under you and you're trying to catch your breath. But you're going further and further and further out. All right, so you are making progress. All right, I'm going to stop with the introduction and pick up with, um, I think, page 13.